Now I would like to invite Director, Institute of Rural Management, Irma Anand, Dr. Umakan Das, to kindly deliver his address, please. Uh, a very good morning. Uh, I can see many students here. Uh, dignitaries on the dais and off the dais. I must, uh, uh, without say, thanks Argus Education Next uh, to, for giving this opportunity to come over here and uh, express our uh, feeling, opinion, and uh, providing a platform where we can interact not only amongst the experts but also amongst the students. Uh, my predecessors, uh, Dr. Jaiswal and Dr. Mahapatra, they talked about. Uh, the challenges and how things have changed. I think uh, uh, this pandemic uh, which has not taught us just how to live but how to progress, how to be, become a good human being as well. Uh, so coming from a, uh, so basically I, I have been uh, there in the technical institutions I've seen uh, students coming and going, so just I want to, uh, when I was asked to talk about what is going to the ecosystem, education ecosystem in the post-pandemic, uh, it's always good to know what is the ecosystem that we are talking about. Uh, the, when we got uh, independence, we inherit, inherited a system which is mostly driven by the colonial thinking which uh, most of our uh, students, uh, parents, uh, uh, without understanding, we started believing that, that this is the best system. Each system has its advantage and disadvantage. So when we talk about an ecosystem, uh, as a, uh, generally that is what we do in uh, management or in economics, we say an input-output system. So what are the inputs? What is the transformation process that it goes, the input goes through? and what is the outcome and output, whether that outcome or output is relevant for us, whether the outcome and output is adding any value to the, our society, who is going to, going through the system, and those, and society. Uh, so when we talk about the input, of course, when we say our, our human resources, the content, the value system, so when I say value system, the value system, you might be seeing, uh, even at least I have seen, I have gone through myself and I have seen many of my friends going through the same thing. 70% of the students, they come from the rural background through vernacular language. Their first schooling is in the vernacular language. When they come to college, the first shift from vernacular language to English, you will see, you feel an experience or go through a system where uh, you feel as if you don't know anything. Suddenly changing from vernacular to English, your friends are talking in English, accent is a British accent, US accent. After we graduate, we enter another environment where we do not know whether what we learned is relevant, where we are going. Whether I am going as a doctor, I am going as a academician or as I'm going as a bureaucrat, I don't know what I learned, whether that is relevant to me. Again, learning, de-learning happens everywhere. What I learned in the school, I did learn when I come to college. What I learned in college when I go to higher ed education system or higher education institutions, I did learn again, learned something new. And I've seen in the systems like particularly IIT system, I, I come from a system which is Number one, we say in an IRF ranking for the last seven years. But nobody has seen what is going inside the system. 40 to 50 percent of students, they come without knowing what they are going to face. 50 to 60 percent, they don't know whether they want engineering or not. 60, 70 percent is they go for management after they graduate. So that's the, the goalpost keep changing because they don't know what, what is that they want to do. So I think that is where we have to understand what the ecosystem that we are talking about. How am I going to integrate my ecosystem so that at the end of the, their career 
or when they pass out or graduate, it adds value to, the, to their understanding. It adds value to, to their thinking, indigenous thinking. It's not what is being told to us. I know even when we were students, even now we are doing. We think if we recommend a good book which is written by a professor in MIT or Harvard or uh, XYZ University, that's the best textbook. If I recommend uh, articles which are published in uh, A star, B star, C star journals, that's the best. If I give tons of material to my student, I will be treated as the best teacher without knowing whether that is relevant, that is appreciated by the students or not. So on the one hand, the system has to, when we are talking about uh, the system, I'm sure, I think the system should, uh, at least now the, through the new education policy, a lot of debate is happening. We are questioning ourselves. We are questioning our system. And we are questioning what should be the technology. Yes, the pandemic has taught us many things. The faculties who were reluctant to use even phone to send emails, they were forced, they were, they, now they are expert in uh, using technology to deliver courses, classes. Students got used to online classes. So everything we could able to adapt ourselves. But again, what about the quality? What about the intent? What about the learning that was happening in the, in, in, in the campuses when they because most of the time, the learning happens not in the classroom. Learning happens not to the class books or the textbooks. It happens to the environment where they stay, live, and they interact with their friend circle. 50 to 60 percent is they learn from their peers, from their friends, and from the, the, uh, the ecosystem that they spend uh, for three years, four years, five years, or ten years. So that is what we are talking about. So we have to think of an ecosystem that adds the value system, the Indian value system, respecting each other. It's not just competition. Competition is not going to take us anywhere. We have seen the capital system. We are seeing how the capital system is performing and how much weight is we assign to fellow, fellow beings. Now we are talking about cooperatives and it's cooperative versus corporates. It's Indian value system versus Western value system. It's not that a particular system is good or bad, but at least we need to know what is good and bad, what is good for our context and what is good for our system. So when we are talking about uh, the system, I at least uh, agree with my panelists who talked about adapting to better technology, learning to better uh, the latest uh, uh, content courses like uh, be it uh, artificial intelligence and uh, uh, machine learning. It's not just one particular program. You'll see students are now started doing not just one program, one degree. While doing their degree, be it uh, BTEC or BSc or BA or BCom or MBA, simultaneously students are registering for other courses. How am I going to hone my skill? more the skill I acquire, the better is going to be my market value. And fatter is going to be my package. Right? So that's, that's where we are leading, whether that is good for a country like India, whether that is good for a society. I think that's where now we are uh, started focusing on the SDG, so the development goals, sustainable development goals. Unless we talk about our environment, Unless we talk about the human being, unless we talk about the poverty, it's not just degree, but it is learning as well as the way we are living, health, literacy, the environment. Because now you might be seeing uh, the Western countries or European countries, the wave, heat wave. So I think uh, as, as the system should highlight focus on these softer issues and which are more important for the life and living of uh, the students, the society, and the human beings. Second thing, uh, uh, I think at least I must say uh, one good thing with the new education policy, besides what was already pointed out, 
is highlighting, emphasizing the vernacular language. I should not feel bad because I'm an Odia. I should not feel bad because I don't talk, know English. I should not feel bad because I can't speak Hindi. If I know Odia, that is good enough, I can communicate. My thinking will be good when I think in Odia, not in English, not in Hindi. So offering degrees in the local languages, vernacular languages, we have such good reach of languages, be it Odia, be it uh, Tamil or be it uh, Kannad, we are rich languages. And when we think in our own languages, we think better, argumentative. You will see most of the people, most of the students, they never argue because they feel if I don't speak English, my teacher will not like, or my fellow, it's my, say, like uh, how people are going to look at me. Whether I understand or not, I mug it, the definitions, the equations, the... I don't know, I don't understand sometimes what is there in, in between two sentences. I think time has come, we have to highlight on those issues. It's not just what is written in the sentence, but what is in between the sentence that is more important. What is more important is what I think and whether I can express what I think in a language to my fellow beings, my to, to my peer people sitting along with me. That is what is feeling proud of the language, feeling proud of the country as an Indian, I think which has come back to a great extent. We were reluctant when we were student. We were thinking of foreign degrees are more important, valuable than Indian degrees. Not so. Sure. I think that we are going to, we have to talk about that system which is going to help us grow, not just wealth-wise, intellectual-wise as well, and as a human being as well. So that is what I'm expecting. I think uh, the deliberation that we are going to have in this day, of course, uh, there are many forums where we have been discussing, deliberating. Sure, the system which is going to evolve is going to be the best for the human being. Thank you very much.